Hello everybody. Uh, we are in our second calculus, truly calculus video. Very exciting stuff. Uh, we are going to talk today about finding limits graphically and numerically. And our objectives for this lesson are going to be to estimate a limit using a numerical or graphical approach. And we also want to understand when limits do and do not exist. So let's get started. Uh, the first thing, the first question I'd like to address is, what is a limit? What does that mean? What is a limit? Uh, let's start to answer this by considering an example. So we're going to consider the function f of x equals x cubed, oh, pardon me, it's a 1, minus 1 all over x minus 1. And that's a cubed right there in case we were having a hard time seeing that. Okay. And what we're going to do next is we're going to simplify this. Uh, if you guys remember from pre-calculus, the top of this fraction can actually be simplified if we factor it. If you look at your polynomial cheat sheets that I gave you in class, uh, you'll notice that x cubed minus 1 can actually be expanded out into the factors x minus 1 outside x squared plus x plus 1 and then on the bottom we still have x minus 1. And now uh, we know that if we have an x minus 1 over an x minus 1 we get to cross those off and we are left with this new trinomial. Okay, that's all great and good, but remember uh, the way that domains work is the domain of this trinomial still cannot have x equal to 1 because if we look at our original function, we had x minus 1 on the bottom. If we had 1 in here for x, we'd get 0 on the bottom, and that's not allowed. So even though we changed some things and we simplified, our domain still has to obey our original function. Okay, that's all stuff we know from pre-calculus. Here's where it ties in to calculus. Uh, we want to understand what this graph is going to look like now that we understand that x can't equal 1 even though we have this parabola. So the first approach we're going to take to do this is called a numerical and the numerical approach you guys is really just using the table function in your calculator. So let's do that. What we're going to do here is, it's kind of bright, maybe that's a little bit better. Let's move it over maybe a little bit this way. Yeah, okay. So, oh, you know what? Let's move it up. How about that? Okay. Uh, first thing we're going to do is go to our y equals. Oh my goodness, this is really hard for you guys to see. Let's try, there's that, but that's still pretty bright. Let's try moving this up. Pardon me, technical difficulties. Let's see if that's a little bit easier. Nope. Let's try, I'll hold it at an angle like that for now. Yeah, that's better. Okay, here we go. We got it. <laughs> All right, so we're going to type in our uh, original um, function x cubed minus 1 over x minus 1. So let's do that alpha and then we'll press uh, y equals 
and then we can press the first one and we get that fraction bar. We'll put x to the power of 3 minus 1 all over x minus 1. Okay. And we're going to graph this. And when we do that, we see that it makes that nice parabola shape, which makes sense because we understood that this uh, trinomial is the same simplified uh, expression. Awesome. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to look at our values as they get close to 1, and we're going to see what happens uh, because we don't really know how to deal with this yet. Uh, we know that our domain can't be equal to it, but we don't understand what happens to our graph or to our values yet, uh, given that it can't equal 1. So let's find out. Let's go to our uh, table set. Let's make sure our table set is uh, set up for this problem. So we're going to press second, and then we're going to press window. And we're going to make sure that our table starts, how about at a negative... zero point five let's take a look at that and then let's make our table change zero point oh one and that will help us get really close to or you know what let's make it point one how about that that'll be a little bit better okay Oh, let me go down, let me change that to just point 0.1, okay. Uh, and now we'll go to our table and we'll press second graph to do that. And here we are at our table, okay. So we can see that as our values get down 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, uh, we get pretty close to Oh, you should be looking at one, right? Pardon me. Let's make sure we do that. Okay. So let's go back to table set actually and let's change this. So we're going to go second window again. And we're going to start our table, let's say, at positive, uh, let's say, 0.75. And now we'll make our change maybe 0.05. There we go. This will be a little bit closer for us. So we're going to press the second table again. Okay, this is going to help us visualize just a little bit better. Uh, you can see as we plug in all of our values that got... There we go. That's a little bit easier for you to see. Okay. Uh, we started here at 0.75. We get close, 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 close to 1. And we approach... It looks like about 3... Let's change our table one more time just to make sure that we're doing the right thing here and that we really are right that it is approaching 3. So we'll press second window again. Uh, this time let's try starting at point 0.9. How about that? And then we'll change by point 0.01. This will be a lot closer. Okay. Now we're going to press second table again. Okay, this is much nicer. So, as we see, if we scroll all the way down, and we kind of put one in the middle of our table there, we see that as our values uh, increase to one, they come in from the, from the right direction, uh, and they approach 1, we see they get very, very close to 3. We have 2.97. And as they uh, decrease towards 1, as they come in from the left, uh, we can see that they are getting also very, very, very close to 3. Okay, interesting. So our numerical approach... Uh, we could just copy down some of those values, or we really don't have to write anything else for that. Uh, you can just write a note in there for yourself. 
under numerical. Let's move this back a little bit. Okay, there we go. We can see a little bit better that way. Under numerical, uh, I just want you to know that you can use the table function in your calculator. And you look at your value from the increasing direction and the decreasing direction and see what it approaches, right? And for the graphical approach, well, again, if we take a look at our graph, oh my gosh, it totally calmed down. Look at that. That's a lot better. Okay. From the graphical approach, if we press graph, let's try, is it just too bright? There we go. Uh, graphical approach, we do have that trinomial, but our graph is actually going to have the following little hiccup in it. So if we set up a sketch here, and we know we're crossing at 1, and we know we get to about 3, like as we discovered in our uh, numerical approach, we actually have an error, don't we? So what we do is we sketch our graph like we would, sketch that parabola shape, but as we approach one, we get really close to three, but then we have this open circle at three. Open. I know that doesn't look very open, looks kind of shaded in, but I promise it's open. We have this open circle at three uh, because, again, x cannot equal one, so we actually don't have that value there, but we know that the limit as we go in on our x values this direction and we go in on our x values this direction, it gets closer and closer and closer to three as we saw in our numerical approach and as we're illustrating graphically now. So what we can do with this information is we can say that uh, even though x can't be 1, as we get very, very close to 1, we get very, very, very close to 3. And so in calculus we say that is the same thing as the limit as x approaches 1 for the function x cubed minus 1 over x minus 1 is equal to 3. The limit. So the x values, or pardon me, the values of our function approach 3 as x approaches 1. That's what that is saying. Okay. Uh, and that's where the term limit comes from. We just, we can't, even when we can't have certain values in graphs, what we can do is quote unquote take the limit and find what those numbers get close to. All right, that answers our question what is a limit? Next thing we're going to talk about is estimating a limit. Estimating a limit. And our example of that is going to begin with us evaluating the function f of x is equal to x over square root of x plus 1 minus 1 at several x values near 0 to estimate uh, the limit as x approaches 0 for the function. Okay, 
So what we're going to do next is going to be very, very similar to what we just did. Uh, we have our two approaches that we're focusing on today, numerical and graphical. So to do the first, remember that's how we just uh, use the table function in our calculator, and we're going to look at our values in our table as they get closer and closer to zero. So uh, first things first, let's make sure that we have the function in our y equals. So there we go, that's not so bad. Let's type that in. We have, again, if you like the function bar, you can press alpha y equals. I meant fraction bar. If I said function bar, that was uh, not what I meant to say, my bad. So we say x over, and then we can put radical x. Where is our radical? There it is. If we press the second, and then x squared, we get our radical. And we're going to type in uh, x plus 1 in that, and then we do minus 1. And if we graph this, or let's uh, first make sure that our table is set up to help us see this clearly. So we're going to go to second window. And again, we want to get not close to 1 this time, so we're not going to start at 9, 6. We want to see closer to 0. So we're going to start at, let's say, uh, let's look at point 0.1. Or how about 0.05? And then we're going to go by 0.001. And now we're going to press second graph to look at our table. Okay. If we go all the way down, oh, looks like maybe we got a little, uh, started a little too high there. So let's go back. Let's press second window. And let's not start this far up. Let's start maybe at 0.01. Let's delete some of these. Okay. Now let's try that again. Second graph. Get to your table. Okay, we're starting at 0.1. Let's go down all the way and let's take a look at where we hit zero. There it is. Okay. Now let's make that kind of the middle of our table so we see what's happening from both directions. All right. So, uh, as our values get closer and closer and closer to zero, here they are, they're decreasing towards zero, we can see we get really, 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 really close to two. And in the other direction, as our values increase towards zero, as we come in from the right, uh, we can see that our values, again, get very, 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 very close to two. Interesting. Okay, so we're going to make a little note for ourselves. We can just say numerically, uh, we're finding that it approaches 2. Interesting. Now let's take a look at our graph. So we're going to press, we already have it in our y equals, so we can just press graph and we should be good to go. All right. Now, here's the thing. We can see uh, as we come in from the left, right, as we go to those increasing values, it looks like we get very, 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 very close to 2. And when we come in from the left, we can see that we get very, 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 very close to 2. Let's illustrate this a little bit better. Let's zoom in. So we're going to press zoom, zoom in, and we're going to go right to the spot we want to see better. Trace up there. Okay, press enter once you've got your spot. There we go. It's a little bit easier to see. So again, as we get close to 0 from the right, and from the left, it looks like our graph is approaching the value 2. So, on our paper, we can just make a note to ourselves also. 
graphically. We can even show this one by sketching our graph, so let's do that. Uh, if we had our point at 2 here, we had our 1, our 1, our 2, let's make sure we mark our coordinate plane as well. Here is our graph, and it kind of does this, goes through 2, and continues to get larger, continues to increase. Okay. And again, this illustrates uh, where our graph is going, that it's getting close to two from both sides. So we've shown uh, graphically, or graphically, pardon me, and numerically that this function approaches two as x approaches zero. So what we get to state then is that the limit as x approaches zero for the function x over square root of x plus 1 minus 1 is equal to 2. Okay. The next thing we're going to go over is finding a limit. All right, uh, what we're going to go over with this is just a key concept. So the example I'd like to show you here is uh, find the limit as x approaches 2, where f of x, our function, is piecewise, and it is equal to 1 when x is not equal to 2, and it's 0 when x equals 2. Okay, if you're having a hard time visualizing that, let's draw a graph real quick to make this a little bit easier. So we're going to take the graphical approach. Let's sketch a graph, sketch a graph. Uh, we know we have to have the 1 and the 2 at least on here on our x-axis. And let's have our 1 and our 2 on the y-axis. Okay, make sure you label your numbers as well. So, uh, our graph is 1 whenever x is not 2. So that's, that's everything. <laughs> Every x value uh, except for 2 is going to be 1. So we're going to draw that horizontal line. Oh, pardon me. That's too high. The horizontal line at y equals 1. But then we're going to leave a hole at 2. And we're going to keep going in the other direction. And again, that just shows that x is equal to, or the function is equal to 1 when x is everything except for 2. And then we need to show that when x is 2, our graph equals 0. So we're going to make a closed circle here at 2. And now we're going to find the limit as x approaches 2. So as our function approaches 2, we're going to find what value it also approaches. And if we do that, if we take a look, if we go in from the right, we see that it approaches 2. If we go in from the left, we see that it approaches 2 as well. And again, you're seeing these, this pattern, especially from the last example, that if the direction from the right and the direction from the left come to the same value, then, ding, 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 that's our limit. So what we're going to say is that the limit as x approaches 2 for the function f of x equals 
uh, 1 when x is not equal to 2 and 0 when x equals 2 is all equal to the value 1. Now, this is an important concept to go over because what about this guy, right? What about the fact that we know the function is actually 2? When we approach 2, the function's actually right here. Well, here's the thing. When we're talking about limits, that doesn't matter because it's important to know uh, we can say that f of 2 equals 0 is irrelevant and we can say because a limit is what is what value a graph a, pardon me, goodness gracious, is what value a function approaches from both sides. Approaches being the key word here. It isn't relevant that our function actually equals zero. We don't care about that. What we care about is what our function approaches approaches and it approaches 2. So our limit is oh, pardon me, it approaches 1, so our limit is 1. Okay, sorry for all these little hiccups. We got one more example. Let's get through it. Okay, uh, the last topic we need to cover is when limits fail to exist. So we're going to write that topic right here. Uh, when limits fail to exist. All right, so uh, the example we're going to do for this one is to show that the limit as x approaches 0 for absolute value x over x does not exist. And we can just take the graphical approach here. Uh, graphically, and you can throw this in your calculator, I'm just going to sketch the quick graph here. If we were to graph the function absolute value of x over x, what we would get would be the following. We have, if we zoomed in all the way, we would get negative 1, 1, and down here we could have negative 1, and up here we could have positive 1. Okay. Now, if we graph this, then what would happen is we'd have open circles here and here, and that makes sense because we can't have zero in the denominator of a fraction. And then we would have arrows going to the right and arrows going to the left. Now, it's important to remember that limits exist again only when we go in from the right and we get a number and we go in from the left and we get a number and those numbers are the same. Just looking at this we can see that when we come in from the left we get 1. Our graph approaches the value 1. When we come in from the right however we approach negative 1. And given those values aren't the same, we know that the limit does not exist. And here's a few different ways to show that. Uh, in your book, what we call values really close to zero or really close to the limit on either side are called delta. So let's label those. It looks almost like a, a funny shaped S. And all that's saying uh, is that if on the interval negative delta to zero, and that's just saying all these really, really small values that get close to zero in that little range right there, because again, when we're talking about limits, we're only interested as they get very, very close. So in that very, very close area, uh, we found that x equals negative one. And in the other really, really close area, uh, from 0 to positive delta, 
we saw that x equals 1, positive 1. And yet another way to write this information, what we just found, is to write out uh, that the limit as x approaches 0 from the right, in the negative direction, equals 1. And the limit as x approaches 0 from the left is equal to positive 1. Oh, this is negative, pardon me. Negative 1 and, par and positive 1. So, as you can see, uh, these two values are different. And when we have the uh, directional approaches uh, approaching different numbers, then we don't have a limit. So we can state the limit as x approaches 0 for absolute value x over x uh, is non-existent is non-existent or does not exist. Okay, moving on. Last one, let me flip over a page of my notes here. One second, okay. Last topic. Unbounded behavior. Unbounded behavior. And here's our example of this circumstance. Uh, discuss the existence of the limit as x approaches 0 for the function 1 over x squared. Again, we have our two approaches. We have our numeric approach, so let's take a look at that. Let's look in our calculator. Let's go to our y equals, and let's type in this function, 1 divided by x squared. And then, let's make sure our table set is good to go. Hopefully, we'll get this one right on the first try this time. Let's see how we do. All right, uh, we want to get really close to zero, so it looks like we're at a good place to be doing that. And let's take a look at our table. Okay, so zero is right in the middle there. That's exactly what we want to see. And now we want to take a look at the values as we approach zero. So what we're seeing here is something very strange. Uh, we have these really big numbers that just keep on getting bigger until we get the thing that we can't be. They keep on getting larger and larger and larger until we get to that value we know is undefined. Here's the thing. You can kind of ask yourself here, do they approach just one value like all our other limits have? And the answer is no, they don't. They approach ever increasing values, which is the nature of an exponential function, right, something squared, is it going to forever uh, increase exponentially. So it's not going to ever touch that asymptote at zero. It's just going to keep on increasing and increasing forever as we get closer and closer to zero. So we're looking at our values that way, and that makes sense that they aren't going to touch zero and they're not going to approach a value. Uh, let's draw the graph as well, just to be sure we understand. Okay. Always got to plot your points here. Uh, let's just label a few of them so we have a scale going on that makes sense. Okay. Uh, so if you graph this in your calculator, again, we can just do a quick preview of what that would look like. If you press graph, my goodness, this brightness is not helpful. Okay, we have a pretty good illustration of what that looks like. We've got our curves going up from both directions, and again, we have that asymptote at zero. We know we can't be zero because then we have undefined at the bottom of a fraction. We know that that's not cool to have. And again, curve up from both directions. 
Okay, so as you can see, if we do our traditional limit thing where we see what it approaches, we follow the graph from both ends, we run into that same problem from the numerical approach. We're never, our fingers are never going to touch at something, right? They're never going to meet at a number that's the same because these lines are never going to stop going up. Okay. So what we can state then is because f of x does not become close to a single number as x approaches zero, the limit is non-existent. Non-existent. Okay, that's the last thing I had to show you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in class tomorrow.